Okay, welcome everyone to this uh, webinar in which we are going to be talking about an exclusive course that we have here in Roatan Dive Academy. My name is Fabio Huitrago. I'm the course director for Roatan Dive Academy, and I am the author of the course Lionfish, Caribbean Lionfish Control. We're going to be talking during these uh, 20, 25 minutes, what is the Lionfish Control course about? So you get that information, and in the case you want to contribute to uh, the control of this invasive species, you can get certified to um, to this course, to this uh, certification card that ha Patty has already approved as a distinctive specialty. Okay, we're doing this seminar today, 8 of June, that is the World Oceans Day. So we want to commemorate the World Oceans Day, not only by uh, posting uh, photos of the beautiful oceans, but also by launching this um, lionfish control course that we know it's going to be a lot of help for uh, the ecosystems on the Caribbean. We need to start controlling the invasive lionfish as we're going to talk in a few minutes to uh, prevent uh, a, a greater ecological impact of the invasion of the lionfish on our ecosystems. So let's get started with um, the lionfish course. Uh, so we're going to talk about first, what is the lionfish? Okay, so there are two species that we have on the Caribbean uh, Sea that came actually from the Indo-Pacific, the Indian and the Pacific Ocean. And these two species are known uh, locally as lionfish or zebra fish. In some other places, they call it also turkey fish. In our case, we know uh, these uh, species, both of them, as the lionfish in the Caribbean. These uh, species, as you can see on this uh, screen, had a, they have a, distribu a natural distribution on the Pacific and the Indian Ocean, as we were saying before. What you see in green is basically one of the two species, which is Therois bolitans, uh, on the northern Australia and the little islands to the eastern, uh, the western Pacific, I'm sorry. And then on blue, marked in blue, what you see is the distribution, the natural distribution of Therois miles, which is the second species of lionfish. These two species uh, are native to the Indian and the Pacific Ocean, but not to the Caribbean or the Atlantic Ocean. Neither they are uh, natural to the Mediterranean Sea, where they have also uh, invaded and they have populations established already. So let's talk a little bit about the life cycle of this, um, of this species before we get into the invasion itself. So what is impressive about this uh, species is that they reproduce very fast. One female can lay from 15,000 to 30,000 eggs every four days. So they lay lots and lots of eggs. And what is more impressive is that they reproduce all year round. So they keep reproducing the 12th month of the year. Every four days, females are spawning. And that, if you can make the numbers, it's going to be a large amount of eggs uh, that each female of the lionfish can just spawn into the Caribbean Sea in this case. After one month, as you can see there on the screen, after one month, the little uh, eggs become larvae and they, they uh, start growing as a fish, right? And then when they get to 10 months already, they are juveniles and they can reach up to 10 centimeters. From that moment on, they start feeding on whatever they, found on the, they find on the reef and they can grow very fast as well. And another impressive fact of the lionfish is that they reach uh, sexual maturity very early. It's only one year that it takes for a, a lionfish to become sexually active. So imagine a species that is active very early and they can spawn 15,000 to 30,000. And even some authors say that they can spawn more than 30,000 up to 50,000 eggs every four days. So this is what makes the, the lionfish uh, a threat for the Caribbean ecosystems because they reproduce very fast and they eat basically everything that moves. So now what you can see here on the, on the screen is what happens with um, the lionfish as they grow. The eggs float basically. So when the eggs are uh, fertilized, they just float up to the surface and they move with the currents. 
and the, the little tiny larvas just get down to uh, seagrass and mangroves and there they start growing as a little juvenile fish. When they are about 10 months, they just go to seagrass or the shallow reefs and then they start growing and growing, feeding on whatever they can. At this moment, they are very small. They are like 10 centimeters. So what they, they eat, they feed on is very tiny little fish or um, larvas of other species like crustaceans and mollusks. So basically they are eating everything that is going to later on become a, a, a big part of the community of the ecosystem. When they start getting closer to the ear, to one year old, they start growing, uh, growing and reaching sexual maturity. So they migrate into deeper waters in where uh, they are going to reproduce again and restart the cycle as we can see on the screen. So what about the anatomy of the lionfish? So basically, as all, all the fish, right, the, uh, the, the lionfish have a dorsal fin, pectoral fins, pelvic fins, anal fins, caudal fins, as you can see on the screen. They also have a pair of eyes, a mouth, and they have um, some spines. And this is the, the, the point here of, of the venom of the lionfish. Some important issue to talk about is that the lionfish is not poisonous. The lionfish has venom, which is completely different. Right, so the venom is located at the base of each of the spines, and in each of the spines, as you will see later on in one of the slides I have here, they have a, a little tiny channel that conducts the venom to the end, to the tip of, of, the, of the spine. So when we touch each of those spines, we get injected with the venom that the lionfish produce for defense. Right, so they have uh, venom uh, spines on the dorsal fin. They also have some on the pelvic fin, and they also have some on the anal fin, as we're going to see uh, later on on uh, other slides. So let's talk about the invasion of the lionfish. How did the lionfish got to the Caribbean? And I'm talking all of these very fast because this is basically the content of the course that we teach, right? When you take the course, we're going to go more in depth in all of these uh, information and details. But uh, as for now, I just want to give you a, a very uh, wide overview of what, what is the course about, right? So uh, the invasion of the lionfish started in the mid 80s when the, the trade of um, fish for different aquariums uh, got to some lionfish to Miami, Florida. And from there, they escaped. They don't know. Uh, the, the different sources that I've read don't know if the lionfish escaped on their own or if it was eggs or larva or if somebody just dropped them on the ocean because they didn't want to have the lionfish anymore. The fact is that the first sighting of the lionfish on the Caribbean was in 1985 when in Miami, Florida, probably somebody dumped it or they, as we were saying, some uh, larva or eggs got to the Caribbean Sea and started developing a population on the Caribbean Sea. So basically what you see here on the screen is the, the starting point of the invasion. In 1985, there was the first sighting of a lionfish on the Caribbean, right there where you see that red spot. Then 15 years later, you can see the red spots on the image on the left. And they were growing on, on Florida, but they have also gotten to Bermudas and New York and Carolinas. So they were starting to spread out. Two years later, in 2002, there were like more uh, sightings. So the population was growing very fast in a couple of years. And this is obviously because we were saying before, they reproduce very fast, right? This is 2004 and 2006, and they continue growing. You can see now 2008 and 2009, and the population is spreading all over the Caribbean at that point. What we have up to now, 2020, is this image, and this is information from the U.S. Geological Service. So this is official information of the sightings that they have recorded. And I can say, because I've been diving in different countries of Central America, that there might be a lot more of red dots in Nicaragua and Honduras, that in, and also in Costa Rica, than what we can see on this map. So probably the, the population is already larger than what we can see. And also, another thing that some of the, of, the, of the articles that I've read say is that the, the invasion has already surpassed the northern coast of Venezuela. So probably is already reaching the northern area of Brazil on the Atlantic Ocean. But we do not have at this moment uh, confirmation of sightings in that area. 
So this is basically what, what, what it looks like in areas like in Florida where the invasion started. So there are some places in which you find lots, but lots of lionfish in one single spot. And uh, what is more impressive of this density of, of lionfish in a Caribbean ecosystem is as they reproduce very fast, this is going to grow exponentially. And at the same time, as they eat anything that moves in front of them, imagine being a little fish and passing through that herd of, uh, of lionfish, through that school of lionfish. It's going to be basically impossible. So any other fish, native fish of the Caribbean that is trying to reproduce is going to be, uh, let's say it's going to be restricted in, in the growth of their population by the increased numbers of lionfish that you can find on the Caribbean in some places, like this one in Florida, where you find lots and lots of lionfish. So this is basically uh, numbers also from um, official uh, sources. This is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, from the United States. And you can see here uh, what I was saying. Some authors say that, that the lionfish, one female can lay 50,000 eggs every three days. So uh, we were being conservative, saying 30,000 eggs every four days. Uh, they reach maturity uh, when they get to one year old, as we were saying before, and the lifespan of a lionfish is estimated to be about 30 years. Uh, they have several spines. We're going to talk about the venom spines in a bit. Um, another important fact that you can see here is uh, where you see that distribution uh, label and underneath it, it says 17 times denser than what they have as a density in, the, in their native range of distribution. Meaning that per each square feet in the Caribbean ocean, there is 17 more lionfish than what it would be in the Indian Ocean or in the Pacific Ocean where the native and natural distribution range is. Right, so this is a very uh, high density for a, a, a predator species like the lionfish that has obviously an impact on the native uh, species of the lionfish, of the, of the different fish and other organisms on the Caribbean ecosystems. Gladly, there is some efforts for removing the lionfish from the Caribbean. Uh, there in, in Florida, there is an organization called Reef Organization that they are doing lots of derbies and lots of research as well. So if you're curious about the information uh, that they are generating, you can go into reef.org and you will find lots of, of information and resources on the lionfish invasion and also on the effectiveness of the derbies that they organize every year. There is also uh, something that is called the Lionfish University that is very interesting and I would say it's also a very important source of information. They are collecting all the information and helping the, uh, the official organizations like NOAA, USGS to elaborate these maps and understand what's happening with the invasion of the lionfish and the distribution, the spread of the lionfish throughout the Caribbean. Uh, another important thing is that in different countries, like in Mexico, in Belize, in Honduras, in Nicaragua, in Costa Rica, and other, other countries of the Caribbean, there is lots of efforts doing by uh, dive shops, dive centers, and divers to remove uh, the, the lionfish, the invasive lionfish. As we know, they are causing, they are uh, having an impact on the natural ecosystems. So uh, together, that uh, efforts, all the efforts that are being conducted on the Caribbean are, are willing to contribute to the, uh, to the control of the invasion. However, we can only dive in very shallow water in, comparisons to, in comparison to the depth that the lionfish can reach. It is estimated that they go as deep as 1,000 feet. So it is going to be impossible for a diver or for many divers to control a population of lionfish to go that deep. So, uh, unfortunately, we cannot stop the invasion because we have already so many lionfish and populations already established. But, he, but we can help control the lionfish in those marine protected areas or biodiversity hotspots that are very important uh, for the reproduction and uh, 
the, the uh, survival of the native species of the ecosystems. And this is why I have written this course, because we want not to stop the invasion, as I was saying, but we want to help control the invasion in key areas. Like here in Roatan, for example, we have a big protected area and we want to control the lionfish to avoid and prevent a larger impact on the native ecosystems that we're willing to preserve to have a destination that is uh, within the plans of, of the community of divers and they want to come here and visit the, uh, the reefs, the healthy reefs, and also uh, watch all the, the different species of fish. That would not be possible if we have a larger population of lionfish because the diversity of other species is declining as a consequence or would decline as a consequence of having a larger population of lionfish. So it is very important for us divers to understand that this is crucial. We need to control the lionfish populations to have a healthy reef, right? So also, uh, gladly, there are some predators that are starting to learn how to eat lionfish, how to hunt lionfish. Remember, this is a, a, an invasive species, meaning that it was not native from the Caribbean. So basically, the, the predators that we have on the Caribbean do not know that they can eat the lionfish, do not recognize the lionfish. So they do not hunt the lionfish, so the lionfish basically doesn't have any predators on the Caribbean. And that's another factor that contributes to a fast growth of the population of lionfish on, uh, on the Caribbean. Right here on the photos, you can see an eel, a shark, a grouper, and a sand diver eating lionfish. And these are photos taken from internet from different places on the Caribbean, right? Uh, remember, I'm going to do a pause here that this is a live uh, session. So in the case you have any questions, please let us know. We have Peter Kokish here helping with the questions. So uh, Peter says hi. So in the case you have any questions, please let us know and I'll try to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, so let's get into the course. So now we know we have to uh, contribute to control the in invasion of the lionfish on the Caribbean. So what I've done is I have used what Patty calls a distinctive specialty, right? So uh, I wrote a distinctive specialty instructor outline that tells the instructors that can uh, teach this specialty or get certified to teach the specialty how to teach this uh, distinctive specialty, the lionfish control specialty. And also, as you can see on the other side, I have uh, prepared a compilation booklet. So basically in this booklet, what I have is all the information that we were talking about, but it is as a PDF or as a book that I can send over to those of you that are interested in learning about the lionfish. And we have here more in detail information on uh, all the topics that I was uh, just talking about on the presentation, right? So we have these uh, books and obviously as we are in quarantine and lockdown, we can use the time to read and complete the knowledge review that you need to fulfill to be certified as uh, a lionfish control diver. Okay, so if any of you are interested, please send us an email. I'm going to have the email at the end of the presentation. So you can just send us an email and I'll send all the information that you need for starting reading and getting the certification on the way. Okay, so let's uh, go back to, to the presentation, right? And uh, let's continue on with uh, what we have as the course. So now, what will you learn during the course? Okay, so here is uh, just a, a brief of the standards. Basically, uh, you can dive to 30 meters. You need to be an advanced diver to take the specialty. And you need to be at least 15 years, 15 year old, so you can take the specialty, right? There is uh, one confined dive and then two open water dives. And basically what we do in con one confined dive is to learn how to control your buoyancy using, using all the equipment. One of the equipments you're going to use, and I'm going to switch here to the camera so you can see what I am going to, to use. So one of the equipment is obviously a pole spear like this one. There are many types. This is just one, which is a, a, a pole that has a rubber band on one end right and the, the the prones and this is a three prone uh 
spear on the other end. So basically what we do is we just hold the rubber, right? And we just pull it and it just projects the pole spear. So as we can come very close to the lionfish, when you get closer, then you release the pole and the rubber is going to make the pole go through the lionfish so you can catch the lionfish. As we know, the lionfish have some venom uh, spines, so we do not want to hold the lionfish with our hands, even if there is some, there are some gloves that you can use that are puncture proof. We prefer to have what we call a zookeeper or a container, right? And in this one, what we have in one of the ends is a funnel. So basically you can put the lionfish in and the funnel is going to open like that, right? And you can put the lionfish in and when you pull the spear back, the lionfish stays in the container and then you take the spear back out so you can continue hunting for lionfish. Okay, so uh, this is basically what you learn during the course, how to use the pole spear, how to carry the, the zookeeper or the container, and how to shoot for lionfish. That's what we do in the first open water dive. And on the second uh, dive, we, on the first one, we spot lionfish and control buoyancy. On the second open water dive, we uh, hunt for lionfish and we put the lionfish in a safe manner in the container. One important thing to, to talk about is that this course is not only about killing the lionfish. And I'm going to go uh, slightly back here. This is not just about killing the lionfish. As we were talking before, it is about controlling the population. But obviously, uh, we want to learn a bit more on the course on why the lionfish is a threat, how the invasion started. So that's why I started with all this information on the lionfish, because the course is not just about wearing or using a spear to go kill the lionfish, right? It is more than that. It's learning why we need to control the lionfish, what are the impacts that the lionfish cause on the native ecosystem, and how we are going to be contributing if we control the populations of lionfish to preserve a healthier reef. Okay, so um, also we have included within the course some uh, first stage for the lionfish. So as we were saying before, you can see here on the left, uh, the, the spine and basically the spine has this uh, sheath, right? That covers the spine and in, within the, the spine on all the sides of the spine, you find that groove, right? That is the one that drives the venom when you touch the tip of the spine, right? So uh, on the fish that you can see on the diagram, you can see the, the uh, venom spines marked with a red dot. And they can have from 11 to 13 on the dorsal fin. They can have two on the pelvic fins and two or three on the anal fin, depending on the size of the fish. So these are basically the, the uh, fins and the spines you need to be aware of when you're uh, managing, uh, handling the lionfish. And this is also something that we teach on the course. It is not just about hunting lionfish. It is also bringing the lionfish back learning about first aid in the case you get a stung uh, and also learning how to treat uh, the, the, the stung of a lionfish in the case it happens. Hopefully you learn the proper way taking the course so you don't need to use the first aid kit, but it's, it's a set of knowledge that you need to have in the case something happens, you are, you are going to be prepared. Another important factor of the lionfish is that the, 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 of the course is that the lionfish can be eaten and it's actually a very good fish to eat. There is lots of restaurants around the world that are uh, starting serving lionfish and especially here in the Caribbean, there is lots of places in which they are uh, serving lionfish and it's becoming even, uh, even more common, right? What most of the people know about is the ceviche that you can see on the lower left corner. But there is also different other ways to prepare the lionfish. And you can be amazed if you put cook lionfish or prepare lionfish on the internet, you will find lots of recipes on how to prepare that can go from a sushi roll to filet to ceviche, uh, sashimi or whatever other recipe that you like. So within the course, we teach you how to prepare the lionfish as well. So we teach you how to cut the venom spines, how to uh, remove the skin and take the filet out of the fish. So again, this is not just a course to learn how to hunt the lionfish. It is a course in which you will learn how to hunt the lionfish, why you need to control the populations, and also how to use the lionfish for either feeding yourself or feeding your friends and using the lionfish as a, a protein source. 
Okay, so now what about the, the duration of the course? Uh, the course can be done in one day if you have all the, the, the reading and the knowledge we've used on before. So we, we can do one confined uh, dive in the morning and then following that confined, we do another open water dive. We do a, the first open water dive. And then after lunch, we do a second uh, open water dive hunting for lionfish. And that will be all the practicals that you need to do for, uh, for taking the course. Obviously, as I was saying, you need to read the uh, booklets that I was showing before, and you need to complete the knowledge review that is at the end of the, uh, of the booklet to be able to uh, be certified as a lionfish uh, control diver. Within the course that we offer, uh, we obviously, this is a PADI course, so you're going to get a PADI certification that is going to be valid around the world as a, a PADI certification. But also, we have uh, been talking with uh, the persons that teach the, the Roatan Marine Park program for controlling the lionfish in Roatan, and it's going to merge at some point. So you can also do, it is your option, you can also do the body certification and have the Roatan Marine Park license for hunting the lionfish. Uh, within the price of the course also, you will have one pole spear that you can use and a zookeeper that you can use for um, for carrying, for having uh, the, the the lionfish and bring them back uh, to shore. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, I'm here to answer any of the questions. Um, so we have Diane from Canada. I'll sign up for sure when I'm ne there next. I love hunting lionfish. Yeah, we do love hunting lionfish and we also do love preparing lionfish ceviche and lionfish sashimi and we have come out with a new recipe which is sevishimi that i can show you when you come down here so we can prepare different kinds of of, of recipes with the lionfish okay so if there is any more questions i can take questions right now before we uh finish this webinar if you don't have any questions just remember that you can uh you can send us any question to the address, the email address that you can see on the screen, gopro at roatandiveacademy.com. And also there is on the webpage, roatandiveacademy.com, there is a, a section in which you will find all the ecology courses that we teach. Now, um, World Oceans Day, it is very important for all of us to renew our commitment to preserve the uh, marine ecosystems. It is not only about sharing the beauty of the ocean. It is also acting to preserve and conserve the ecosystems that we have the, uh, the, the, the opportunity to dive in and to visit when we come diving. So um, thank you so much for watching this webinar. I hope you have enjoyed uh, the, the, the webinar. And remember, if you have any questions, please let us know. And we hope to see you soon here to learn how to hunt lionfish and prepare some delicious recipes. Thank you very much for getting to the end and see you next time.